Hello, reformers, and welcome to a special feature of Mushroom Wars 2. Yeah, this is something that I didn't have on my radar, and I wasn't aware that it even existed, but I very much have been enjoying this game. It has a single-player campaign of, well, you can see right here, you can see actually it has well, 200 level, uh, kind of, kind of 200 levels because the stars obviously don't really impact that too much. But you have two different campaigns. One obviously is over here, which is already unlocked, episode one, and you need to complete episode one to complete episode two. Then of course you have multiplayer. You can do ranked matches, one versus one with other players, and you can also do online matches with players of your level for three or four players, including two versus two. And then. You even have custom games with friends, so you can do two versus two with friends, one versus one versus one, so free for all basically. And there's, oh, I, I, I don't know, it reminds me so much of the game Galcon. I don't know whether anyone knows Galcon because it's a pretty old game by now, and it started off life as a flash game, as far as I'm aware, and then it started into more of a standalone variant, and then there's been all kinds of other games similar to it, and I love Galcon, absolutely love it. So anyway, this is very much like that, but with a little bit more complexity. As you can see, I've been playing through the game on the easy difficulty setting so far. Haven't really tried any of it with, you know, medium or hard. There is even an expert level, as you can see here, the four star ones. That's going to be pretty tricky. There are boss levels, there are tutorial levels as well, so if you you know, if you want to check out the tutorials, then you can, of course, do that. I suppose the best thing would be to start off on a pretty easy mission, but we're going to play it on medium. And also, I don't know whether you've noticed already, but on the right side here, you can choose between two different heroes in the campaign. Now, I think in the multiplayer, you can choose between even more different hero types. Of course, I haven't unlocked episode 2. I suppose episode 2 might have extra heroes to select there. But anyway, if you're interested in this game, then by all means, check the link in the description. It's, in my opinion, really, really polished, really, really fun, actually. I mean, you can see I've been playing it myself just because, I don't know, I just find it really, really enjoyable. Anyway, we're going to be playing on medium on mission 6, and we're going to try that out. I have never played on medium, as I've said, so this is going to be pretty interesting. All right. So, if you're not familiar with Galcon, basically what it is, is you move troops over to various places, and it's all based on numbers. So, you know, you just make sure that you are, you know having higher numbers than your opponent, and that's basically all you need to do. But obviously, it, it really depends. You can upgrade your buildings, so that's obviously something to take into account. There are forges. Forges, what that does is basically just upgrades your troops so they can wield better weapons and all that sort of thing. So you do need to be a little bit strategic in that respect. There are also auto-firing towers on the level as well, so that's obviously something to be a bit aware of, because sometimes there can be three, four towers in a very, very small area, and that can, well, that can, you know, can eliminate quite a few mushrooms. Yeah, quite a few mushrooms. Anyway, we're going to try and just build up our forces here. I'm going to try and upgrade. This guy is trying to take the tower in the middle here. You can convert towers and any structure, actually, into anything you like. So if, if I want to convert this, for example, into a forge, I can do that, as long as the population in that structure is 30 or above. And the cost for upgrading is also, you know, shown there as well. But yeah, that's that's basically what we're doing. Ah, yeah, okay, so as you can see, we're playing on medium now. Now on easy, it shows how many units your opponent has in various, you know, various of their buildings. So this time it actually doesn't because we're obviously playing on medium. So that's that's interesting. So we're playing blind basically, but that's absolutely fine because as you can see, everything seems to be going well, very, 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 very fine. So I'm going to charge straight at his maximum base here because, well, it's not a maximum base because he hasn't upgraded it to the highest level. Like these these things right here, these are all upgraded to the maximum level. So obviously, you know, that's going to make a huge difference for us. He's, he took back that forge, which is not really a big deal. And he is attempting to, you know, take these things back as well. But that's okay. 
That's absolutely fine. I mean, we're, we're doing okay. I'm going to start going to 75% in terms of the amount that we charge here. So you can see these numbers on the left here. Whichever one you highlight determines however many troops you send at a particular target. So if you want to send 100% of your troops, you highlight 100, of course. And if you want to send 25%, you know, then obviously you send 25%. So that's that's pretty good. I like that quite a bit because with I think with Galcon that also had a similar similar sort of mechanism. But it's it's cool to see that that's actually here because you need that really to make sure that you're not sending every single one of your people. It's probably best considering I'm playing a little bit blind here because I have no idea how many forces he has in any of these places. It's probably a good idea to send maybe 50% or something like that, but. Yeah, as you can see, everything is just going very, very swimmingly. And let me tell you, I've actually failed some of the easy levels because they just catch you off guard. You know, sometimes they introduce a situation that is very, very difficult to come back from. You know, sometimes they'll make the opponent have, I don't know, three pretty high tier buildings. And you yourself will start with one. And then you have to try and, you know, catch up, I suppose you could say. So, yeah. As I said, there are also boss levels. I'll maybe show you that one in just a second. But I'd like to try maybe a hard difficulty level. Let's see the first hard difficulty level, shall we? Obviously, this, you know, this is, again, the first hard difficulty that I'm playing. So, you know, do forgive me if I tend to fail, which is probably going to happen. I mean, let's just see what happens here. Okay, so probably going to need to switch to 25%, send those guys off right there, and we're going to need to send these over here, get those right quick, and we need to get those forges as well. The hard AI is probably going to be pretty merciless, so I do need to be a little bit wary of that. Okay, I'm going to send 100 over there. And do bear in mind... Oh, it seems like I can't upgrade? Is that... Is that true? Ah, it's not... Okay, it's not giving me upgrade... Shall we say icons? So it's not telling me when I can actually upgrade a particular structure. Whereas in other difficulties, it does do that. So it's gradually increasing the amount of difficulty curve that there is in... You know, to be found in the game. So that's... That's cool as well. Although... Fiendish. Very fiendish. Mm -hmm. I'm not particularly happy about that. But anyway, I'm just going to send all my forces over here. Just going to sort of monopolize them all on this. Consolidate them on, the, on this tower here. And I'm going to try and launch a bit of an assault against his various places here. So I'm going to go for a two-pronged assault here. Now, I'm not a very experienced Galcon player or indeed Mushroom Wars player. Because there is a Mushroom Wars 1. But... I'm going to try a couple of tactics here and see whether they pay off. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It really depends. Ooh, that is harsh. Oh, that was that was very harsh. Okay, so it seems like I might be able to get a couple of things here. Are they? Oh, no, no, they're reinforcing themselves. Wow, that is interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, I'm going to send 100% of my people from there over here and then over here. We are owning two of these things now. So that's pretty nice. So we're going to obviously have a pretty nice advantage over there. And we're still we're still fighting over there. Yep, there we go. Give me that. Give me that. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to continue sending these things over there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my forces a little bit. Because I don't want him to just think, oh, I should just reinforce that one place. You know, you need to strike in multiple areas to make sure that everything's going well. Obviously, the other thing that I'm forgetting to do, because usually I'm used to seeing the, the little icon, I'm forgetting to upgrade. And that is a thing that you very much need to do to increase the production of your mushrooms. Ah. Yes, we're quite the mushroom farmer, are we not? Yes, we are. All right, is he going for the tower? Yeah, it seems like he's going for the tower. Okay, well, that is a little bit weird of him because going for the... Oh, okay, wow, you're doing something very weird there, sir. Because, <laughs> I don't know whether you know, but forges and towers, they do not produce mushrooms. Only little mushroom houses do. So, him just rushing for the things that are barely defended, that's kind of not the best idea. Anyway... 
the AI notwithstanding, you know, it, it is a hard AI, so it did give me a little bit more of a challenge than, than usual. So, okay, that, that is only level 9. Do bear that in mind. I mean, just look at the map, okay? So this is the end of the map right here, and obviously this is the big boss I, I would get at the end. But you can see I'm basically, I don't know, 40% of the way through, so... Yeah, that, that that's quite a lot of content for the single player campaign alone. And if you have if, you know if you have some friends to play with, or if there's you know some people playing the ranked multiplayer, then obviously that is that is there for you as well. Anyway, I think it's about time that we go for a bit more of an advanced mission here. So I'm going to go for mission 22, and I'm going to select the new hero that I literally just unlocked. And I'm going to play on easy so that you can actually see a couple of differences with. I th did I did I actually show an easy level? I don't. I, I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Well, anyway, the fact is, it would be a nice idea to show an easy level just so you can see the differences between the difficulties. And then we may try an expert one. Ooh, that's gonna that's gonna hit me hard, isn't it? Okay. So let's have a look here. Okay. So as you can see, we can upgrade these. We're gonna upgrade these straight away. And then I'm probably gonna send. I'm probably going to send a bunch over here to try and get these houses right there. Now, each hero has four abilities, and these abilities can be used by getting your energy level up. As you can see, your energy level goes up quicker, dependent on the amount of units that are dying. Yes, yes, so you need to sacrifice your mushrooms, well, in the due course of things, if you are going to be, you know using your abilities at all. So I have Equate Morale, I have Shackles of War. Shackles of War is actually very good in my opinion because it completely negates someone moving from a very, very highly populated village and blocks them from doing so. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to be converting this tower into another forge. I personally feel like the forge is a much better building than the tower, unless unless you need it, you know, unless you need the defense, then obviously that is a good way to go. Also, do bear in mind, on easy, things are going to tell you, like there's going to be an icon that will tell you S SOS, SOS, and it's going to tell you exactly where an attack is coming from. Obviously on higher difficulties it doesn't do that, so, you know, a little bit fiendish once again. And this is actually something that I could trans- uh, yeah, I'm gonna- what I'm gonna- yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer a bunch of people into the tower. And I'm gonna upgrade it into a little house, because right here this tower is not doing anything, so it's absolutely useless. Anyway, they're transferring some people over there, and I'm gonna upgrade this, and I'm probably gonna try and take that as well. Gonna transfer some more guys over here. Ah, they're trying to take that neutral place. All right, so I'm gonna use my special ability here. I'm gonna burn them all. Yeah, that is that is called Ring of Fire. It destroys units within its effective damage radius. It has a kill limit of a thousand mushrooms, so you can imagine how much damage it can actually do. And as you can see, it has weakened our energy reserves rather considerably, but that is to be expected, of course. Anyway, I have 126 here, so it's probably about time that I launch a couple of assaults against these these guys and take it very easily indeed and then we'll probably launch one down here and have you know hopefully have him adapt to that and then I can send a couple of things down here I can upgrade that send this over here and so on and so forth you know you need to kind of keep your opponent just on his toes really because you know, you don't want them reinforcing just one place over and over and over, because I've seen that happen multiple times when I was just starting to play, and obviously that really does make a huge difference. Now, we're going to lose something here, but that's fine, because as you can see, there's one that is absolutely just... There's no one there. There's, there's literally no one there. So this is, this is going to be very, very easy to take... And that is fine, because he has no forges right now, which is hilarious. He has no forges, which means... Oh, he has one forge now, but yeah, anyway, the point is, is that he had no forges, and that meant he had no weapons. And it's very, very difficult for him to push without any weapons, because weapons make a huge difference to how much damage each mushroom is able to do in a battle. So we're just going to continue getting these guys there, and I'm going to try and reinforce this forge here. And we don't have too many other places that I can draw from at the moment, which is okay because we are completely overwhelming him with numbers, which is exactly the point of the game. 
And then, oh, he's going to take that forge at the end. Well, of course he is. Could have used my ring of fire there, but not really necessary. There you go. So you can see that easy level actually took me a little bit longer than even the hard level. So I think it is now probably about time that we check out an expert level. So let's go back to the first expert level. That is level 14. All right, so we only have the base hero for this because you unlock the other hero at around mission 19, mission 20. So this guy has a completely different set of abilities and you'll see what those are when we go in here. But I may not have enough time to explain them depending on how good the expert AI is. Oh yeah, and this, this, this mission is actually the one that I had the most trouble with on easy as far as I can remember because as you can see this guy has three bases, I only have one. So let's see if I can actually do a proper job this time, shall we? All right. All right, so upgrade first, shall we? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to upgrade first, and then we're going to start sending a couple of people over to this forge, and this guy is absolutely going to murder us. I have a feeling that he's absolutely going to murder us. He's already taken a forge, and he's got a lot of people in there. Right. Okay, I'm going to just have to send a bunch of people over here and hope that our weapons will carry us forward because obviously that makes a huge difference to how much damage we're able to do and yes we took it. Oh close, that was very very close. As you can see however the expert AI is kind of murdering us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't think there's anything I can do actually. This is kind of new to me because <laughs> again I've only played against the easy AI so far and then medium obviously on the, in, in the video but uh, yeah kind of thought this might happen did I nope nope wasn't able to nope okay no nope, that doesn't seem to be working okay so let's let's try a different tactic here let's try and restart okay so what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna just go fully over here take this and then, well, that's the thing. He's going to go straight for the forge, isn't he? So have I already messed it up? Yeah, I guess I have. Yeah. Yep. There we go. <laughs> so there are these moments where you're kind of wondering, hmm, how do I, how do I do this? You know, how do I do that? So we're going to send a bunch over to this forge once again. And now we've got a weapon. So that should make it a lot easier for us to take this over here. So we're going to try and do that and now me sending a couple over here is not really gonna no not not really gonna do much maybe I'm just not not able to do it maybe I should use my shields that would probably make a good deal of sense wouldn't it so let's try one more time before we take a look at the boss level and see what's going on there so let's see here okay so all 100 over here well 100% of them over here and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just going to continue sending units in this direction. Okay, so they've already taken a forge. It's very smart of him to actually do that. And do I not have... I don't have enough energy for that. <laughs> I don't have enough energy for that. All right, well, that's fine. Let's, uh, yeah, let's not go to that. Thank you very much. Let's let's quit to the menu, shall we? I would have liked to, uh, I would have liked a button to actually go back to... Oh, there we go. It actually does go back to the map. Okay, so... Let's take a look at the first boss. So this boss has a variety of different attacks and you'll see what those are as we fight him. But the thing is, is that you have to beat your opponent while the neutral boss AI enemy is also attacking both of you. As far as I'm aware, it attacks both of you. But anyway, let's try this. All right. So first off, what we want to do is we want to send a lot of people to a lot of places. As many as we can get. There we go, there we go, yes. Keep, keep sending them, keep sending them. I'm gonna keep upgrading a little bit as well. As you can see, the toad is now starting to eat our mushrooms. I don't appreciate it. There we go, send that. And just keep upgrading, you know, because our fellow over here already has an established base. So obviously that is 
a bit problematic, but what we're going to start doing now is we're going to start transplanting a bunch of mushrooms from the top of our area here down to the bottom so that we can start upgrading a little bit faster because you need a certain threshold of mushrooms in a particular place to be able to upgrade and the final upgrade requires 20 mushrooms in that place so obviously you need to be you know a bit supportive of your other places so yeah there we go I think I think we're pretty good now so yeah we're, we're still we're still just upgrading a little bit there we are yeah, that's nice let's send a couple over here just to speed that up there we go and we can start sending those guys down here all right so yeah we also have morale up here so morale actually as far as I'm aware does actually help your forces to fight a little bit more Mm, shall we say effectively I suppose I mean I'm I'm actually unsure what what it what it really does but I think that is what it does so anyway let's start stockpiling a bunch of units which is really not a good idea <laughs> I would not recommend to do this in general versus another player or something because I think that this is really creating way too much of a weakness around your entire territory for it to be viable but I think it's just funny to do that anyway. So what we're going to do is I'm going to send 50 to a variety of different places. So I'm going to go to the forge first, going to go to this place, going to go here, here and here if I can. And then we're just going to continue pumping 100% into this area here. And then I'm going to try and use my ninja technique, my sabotage. Group of units spreads evenly to attack all enemy buildings. So I'm going to try and use this very, very quickly. I'm going to use this right now. And as you can see, it did a little... Oh, okay. Yeah. Did not work as I intended it. Let, let me just put it that way. Oh, here we go. So this is the boss's special ability. What it's going to do is it's going to transfer all of these things into the lowest tier of building. So, yeah, kind of kind of annoying, right? Yeah, but it doesn't matter because we actually benefit from this greatly because we have the majority of territory and we're able to upgrade these things very very fast and it's not really a big deal to us but otherwise I'm just going to continue flooding units over there and over here and so on and so forth and I think we are then done I think we are basically done there is also a speed boost I don't know whether you saw me using that but there's also a speed boost and you can also increase your morale by one star and there's also a defensive shield which I showed you earlier in that Rather pitiful display on the expert level, yes, exactly. So yeah, there you go. That's a, a little bit of a look at Mushroom Wars 2. And if you'd like to see more, then by all means let me know, because I have a huge amount of fun on this game, and uh, I don't really mind playing some more. But anyway, if you'd like to check out the game, the link is in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.